My name is Andrea Hudspeth and I'm one of the trustees of Hen Harrier Action and I'm also a member of the Scottish Rat Study Group. I've invited along a fellow Raptor Study Group member onto my patch to do a bit of birding and also to tell us a little bit more about who the group are and what they get up to. So I'm here with Logan Steele from the uh, Scottish Raptor Study Group um, and I'm going to ask him to tell us a little bit about who the group are and what they do. So, Logan, over to you. Who are the Scottish Raptor Study Group and why are they important? Well, Andrea, the Scottish Raptor Study Group um, consists of about 350 members and we're scattered across 12 branches from Orkney in the north and the Shetland in the north to the borders in the south. And what we're primarily involved with is the monitoring of birds of prey, 19 species of birds of prey plus the raven, which we treat as an ordinary raptor. Mm -hmm. So the information we gather is submitted to Nature Scott, which helps inform uh, the Scottish Government with regards to the conservation of, uh, of raptors across Scotland. And that's all volunteers, is it? Yes, it's all volunteers, yes. And we did a calculation in 2018, and we reckoned that the financial value of our contribution was about 1.75 million all of which is given free of charge and by through voluntary effort. Yeah. And uh, just to also add, Andrea, that the Scottish Raptor Study Group is a member of the Scottish Raptor Monitoring Scheme, which was set up in 2002 and consists of nine partners. And we all work together in terms of monitoring raptors. And that information goes on to them um, from the government, like I said before. So that's a valuable piece of work that we do. Fantastic. And apart from monitoring raptors, do these groups get involved in any other activities? Well, the Scottish Raptor Group members really started off simply monitoring raptors, but sadly, over time, we've had to become more involved in, in political lobbying and, and speaking to um, the Scottish Government. So, reluctantly, we've been dragged into that area. We'd much prefer just to spend our time and effort simply monitoring raptors, but it's a sad reflection of where we are today. Yeah, no, it's a shame. So who would you say is a typical Raptor Study Group member, or, or is there a typical Raptor Study Group member? Well, if you asked me 10 years ago what the typical Raptor rocker was, he would have been um, middle-aged, um, with a beard, and, and a cagoule, um, <laughs> clambering over the high hills. But more recently, the reality is that the Raptor Group members are a huge, diverse range. We've got um, people in their teens, right up to people in their 70s and 80s, and they've come from all walks of life every imaginable occupation you can think of. The reality okay. is that much of to work takes place around farmlands, gardens, parks, looking at things like kestrels, sparrowhawks, buzzards and ravens. So that's as much as, as, as important really as it is as, as monitoring uh, remote golden eagle sites. So it's really there's something for anyone. There is, you don't need to, you don't need to be um, superbly fit or, or um, particularly expert as long as you've got an inquiring mind, uh, your patience mm -hmm. and you're willing to sit and wait and watch, you can learn a lot. And some of our Raptor workers do 20, 30 sites a year, but some just simply do two or three. And it's very casual, uh, very laid back. Uh, but every contribution is of value. Even if you're looking for something and seeing nothing, that is a result, uh, as well as finding breeding birds with chicks and, and uh, fly young. Mm -hmm. So if you were to <coughs> recommend people to join the Raptor Study Group, what would you say uh, the pros are and are there any cons when we're out there yeah. doing this monitoring? Well, there's far more um, positives than the negatives. Um, it's, it's great, it's fresh air, exercise, um, you're out in all, all, all times of the year. Um, you're often working on your own, but you can be working in small groups. Some of our raptor branches monitor species in a, in a, gr a loose grouping of people. So it's a bit like um, tag wrestling, you're know, doing a little bit of raptor work here and then you're passing on information to somebody else, they're coming in to help. Generally speaking, anybody who's arriving inexperienced generally gets um, a mentor or someone to work with. So and you can pick up knowledge and experience quite quickly. The best way to get it is getting dirt on the fingernails experience out in the hill. You can read about birds of prey till you're blue in the face, but until you actually get out and watch them, that's when your learning really starts. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, would you say the Scottish Raptor Study Group are sort of actively wanting more members at the moment? Yes, we always are. We've been a little bit um, quiet in terms of recruitment mm -hmm. of late, but we are looking to do more, and the Scottish Government and Nature Scott are looking, us, looking to us to do more more monitoring and uh, we only have so many people at the moment so we would welcome new members um, and if, if they're interested all they need to do is go to the Scottish Rap Study Group website there's an email there send the email it'll go to a local coordination point and farmed out to a local branch depending upon your postcode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great excellent okay. so hopefully people get in touch. Yes indeed. And you mentioned a bit about having to get into the sort of campaigning arena and lobbying arena as well yes. and I believe that's also been partnership with other people as well isn't it? Yes it was. In 2017 um, the Scottish Raptor Study Group 
um, two, two individuals from that group actually presented to the Petitions Committee at the Scottish Parliament. And the Scottish Parliament Petitions Committee were so surprised at what we had to say. It was uh, immediately referred on to the Scottish Government's uh, Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee. Um, and the, what we were asking for was for the licensing of grouse moor shooting. Um, that then subsequently led on to other activity which um, resulted in Professor Verity's um, report which was published in November 2020 and the expectation is there will be some legislation, primary legislation introduced in the new current term of the Scottish Parliament. And I suppose it's important to say at this point as well that that was just for the licensing of dri driven ground driven shooting. Schools, yes. um, so we haven't been urging for an actual outright ban like others have. No. Do you want to say a little bit more about that? Yes, I'd, I'd very much welcome the opportunity to make this absolutely clear because there are some people suggesting uh, we're trying to do the very opposite. So the Scottish the Rap, Scottish Rap Study Group and the RSPB in uh, the UK are simply asking that driven grouse shooting be conducted uh, within the law and in an environmentally sustainable manner. That's all we're asking for. Um, some factions of the um, game shooting industry and grouse in particular are claiming that we're looking to ban grouse shooting and we're wanting to see all jobs banished off the, the face of the earth. That is far from the truth. We appreciate the value of uh, con rural country sports in terms of jobs and sustaining rural economies and, and rural businesses, but they have to operate within the law. So we don't want to see the glens banished of, of homes and schools and, and uh, other businesses. All we're asking for is maintained within the legal confines um, and maintained in a sustainable manner. Which, which seems perfectly reasonable, isn't it? To well, it does. To most people. Because many other businesses have to operate within the law. Absolutely. And unfortunately, yeah. the grouse shooting industry um, seem to have been running fast and loose with the law. Mm -hmm. I should point out at this stage that not all driven grouse shooting businesses are running um, contrary to law. Some are. But unfortunately, the ones that create all the headlines and doing the other members a great disservice. And I suppose that also leads on to the, the sort of perception in the media that there, there's sort of bullying, um, yes. primarily, as was said recently, you did an interview for BBC, yes. um, in which a gamekeeper was saying he felt he was being bullied. And I yes. think it's fair to say that's not actually coming from our side of things at all, is it? Maybe there are gem members of the general public, but certainly not, that is not something Raptor workers would engage in at all, is it? Not at all, no. We ourselves are subject to invitation on a fairly regular basis from gamekeepers themselves. Again, primarily from some Drifting Grouse Moors. We've had situations with uh, young ladies who have been out on the hill being um, approached by men on, on camo, a rifle over their back, on quad bikes being quite aggressive. Mm -hmm. We've had members of the public being stopped and, and asked to um, stop walking in a certain direction. Um, we've also had um, members' tires let down. Um, we've had people being followed um, on, on the moor sometimes, on ATVs. Mm -hmm. And we know some car parks on Drifting Grouse Moors have cameras actually on them. And personally, I've also had abuse on social media. Mm. And there are two particularly vocal um, people who do this, both ex-gamekeepers. So I find that quite um, irritating and disappointing, especially when these very same people are calling us out for um, abuse and uh, intimidation, which is ridiculous. And I suppose in a way, it's through sort of trying to manage this as well, is, is how this role that you've recently taken on within yes. the RAP Study Group has come about. Do you want to tell us about what your, your new official role is? Yes, my title is the Communications Secretary, and it's both internal communication and external communication. So I'm heavily involved in contact with various journalists and, and broadcasting people, just trying to get across the message about who Raptor workers are and what we do, and also trying to put up a an alternative view to the one being portrayed by some certain factions. Mm. And what I keep going back to time and time again is that people are staggered that in the 21st century we've still got men in tweeds creeping about grouse moors, shooting, killing, trapping and poisoning mm. birds of prey, especially the golden eagle, which is effectively Scotland's wildcat, Absolutely. but it's been grubbed out to certain moors. Yeah. Mm. But I would also add that um, within my role I'm seeing more and more examples of uh, positive engagement from uh, many um, game shooting industries and even some grouse shooting industries are now starting to become far more engaged and enlightened. And we've seen a gradual, a slow but gradual uh, increase in the number of occupied sites that we're finding. Mm -hmm. But there's still some very bad black holes for raptors such as southern uplands, um, east side of Cairngorms as well. And southern Perthshire is also a bad area for raptor persecution. Wow, thanks very much for explaining okay. that to us. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah.